Hello everyone, we will continue that topic. In the previous video, what we did, we created a display button in the ALV output. Now, what is our requirement? Whenever we will select a row and whenever we will click on to this button, I will display the details of that sales order number from the item table means BBAP table. Now, whenever you are clicking on to the button, whenever you are performing the actions, we all know at that time user is performing an action. It means it is a user command. And it is our next topic also in the ALB user command. Whenever, whenever user is performing the action, it means user is giving some command at that time, which particular thing will call user command will call. Now I will go to back button. I will go to back button. And you can see we have a dedicated parameter for user command. We'll simply uncomment this parameter because whenever user will perform the action, whenever user will click on to the button, it means user is giving some command, user is giving some action. So at that time, which particular thing will call user command will call. So I'm simply uncommenting this parameter. I will give some name in front of this parameter. Suppose I'm saying USR underscore command. You can give any name. It is totally our wish. Now we will go for same to same navigation, which we did in case of PF status. Same thing, we will do it for user command now. Same to same thing. SCP already did this. We'll check how SCP did and we will go for same to same thing for us. So I will just simply copy this parameter I underscore callback PF status set. Same to same way we are doing. But this time we will go for user command. We'll check user command. I will find the same to same parameter. I underscore callback PF status set. Enter. I will double click on reuse ALB list display function module. I will go inside the function module. I will again find. I will scroll down. I will go for double click on this function module. But this time we have to check I underscore callback user command. In front of this, SAP gave this name. So I will simply find this name. Now with this name, SAP has a subroutine. So we'll simply copy this. I will go to back button. And we will paste in our program. Now I will paste in my program. Now every form has a end form. Now our name is not this, uh, not this overview underscore user command. Our name is USR underscore command. So I'll simply copy and paste it here. I'll check the syntax and I will activate. Now, whenever user will perform a action onto the button, so at that time, which particular subroutine will call this USR underscore command subroutine will call. It means whatever the logic we will write inside this subroutine that will execute. For the best understanding, I'll just put a breakpoint onto this subroutine and I will show you is it calling or not. I will execute. I'm giving input. 
I will select a row. Whenever user will click on to this button, it means user is giving a command, user is giving a action. So I'll simply click on to this button and you can see my control automatically stop inside this subroutine. In this subroutine is calling user underscore command. So inside this subroutine, we will write a logic to fetch data from your sales order item table, means VBAP table. Now, if I will see this subroutine, we have two using parameters in this subroutine. Suppose if I will double click on to RS underscore cell field, if I will open this, you can see I clicked on to a record. I clicked on to a record. You can see I clicked on to the record where sales document number is 005 or 02. And you can see in the value that thing is automatically coming. Now, suppose I will again show. Suppose I am selecting the first record. On the first record, sales document number is five sum zeros one. If I will click on to this button, if I will open this RS underscore cell field, you can see now the value is this. So now can we not able to fetch the data from VBAP table based upon this input? Yes, we can fetch and display in the form of ALV. This is extremely important requirement, real project requirements. Whenever you are whenever you are selecting a record and clicking on to that button in this rs underscore cell field yeah, which is the using using parameter of this particular subroutine in this value column we are automatically getting the value whatever the sales document number value is there we will fetch that data based upon now we will proceed with the logic part. So how to write a logic? Firstly, we will declare a structure. We will declare an internal table and work area of VBAP. Then we will fetch the data. So firstly, I will copy the structures, internal table and work areas of VBAP from previous program itself because so many times we did that. So I'll just simply copy. So I'll copy the structure of VBAP and I will paste into my program. We'll copy the internal table and work areas of VBAP. I will check the syntax and activate. Now we will write a query to fetch data from VBAP table. Now inside this subroutine, we will write a logic to fetch data from VBAP table. So I will write select. I want to fetch the data of three columns, VBELN, OSNAR, MATENAR. I'm fetching from VBAP table. Into table internal table my internal table is lt underscore vbap now this where condition is most important now what is the where condition to fetch data from vbap table whatever is coming into this rs cell field value 
that is our input to fetch data from BBAP. If you remember just few minutes back, if we are selecting a record where sales document number is five, some zeros, one. So in this particular, particular structure, the value column has that value. If we are going for five or zeros two. So in this particular thing value, we have that particular value. So what is our where condition? Where VBELN is equal to RS cell field value. We all know input always pass from right to left. So that input will go to VBAP, VBELN. It will fetch the data of these three columns and data will come into this internal table. I'll check the syntax and I will activate the program. So now in this internal table, we have the data. Now we have to create a field catalog also. So our field catalog will consist of three columns. So I will create a field catalog of three columns. I'll simply copy paste. So these are our three columns of VBAP. So this is our column one, column two, column three, because our VBAP data will displace separately. So I'll go for one, two, three serial number only. Now our internal table is LT underscore VBAP. LT underscore VBAP. LT underscore VBAP. There should not be any confusions because we have one ALV already there. Now we are going for second ALV. So for the best understanding, I will make it as LT field cat one. Okay. So, so that there'll be no confusion that we have two separate field catalogs. So I will make one more internal table and work area for field catalog. And I will replace here. This is our one, one, one. We can use the same work area also if the work area is clear, but there should not be any confusion. So I'm taking a separate work area also. I'll check the syntax and I will activate. Now our data is in this internal table. Our field catalog is ready. Now we will simply call reuse ALV grid display function module to bind the VPAP data. So I will call reuse ALV grid display. Now I will pass the field catalog. Now our field catalog is LT underscore field cat one. Now, if I will go to internal table, our internal table is LT underscore PPAP. Best practices, you should always, always uncomment the exceptions. I'll check the syntax and I will activate the program. Rest part of this user command will continue in the next video. Thank you.